Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate Arnell. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, good to see you again. Um, today I'm actually down in Cornwall, so I thought it'd be fun to sit in my little organic hammock seat thing here and film a video outside because it's flipping beautiful. So, so today's video... <laughs> Didn't really think this through, did I? So today's video is a little plastic-free July themed video. Originally, I had planned to film this about two weeks ago and it was gonna be like a how to prep for plastic-free July video, but time has just flown by and my time management skills are definitely sort of, um, yeah, there's room for improvement, let's just say that. So I'm still gonna talk about some of the things that I do to prep for plastic-free July, but then I'm gonna talk about some of the things to help get you through it. So I love Plastic Free July, mainly because it's a time for me to check in with myself and go, right, what am I still using that contains plastic? Is there a better alternative, a reusable alternative, a refillable alternative, or do I even need an alternative? Like, is it an essential thing in my life? So it's a great time for me to kind of yeah, assess where I'm at. And over the years, it's been brilliant at sort of getting me to focus. I love Plastic Free July because it's in the summer and it's one of those things we can all just sort of say to everyone, hey, it's Plastic Free July, didn't you know? So if you're doing Plastic Free July as well, brilliant. And I hope you find this video a little bit useful. Oh, there's a fly on my screen. <laughs> Nature. So in the lead up to Plastic Free July, I personally like to try and keep a little track of what I'm still throwing out or what I'm still using that contains plastic. Plastic can be a little sneaky. It won't just be the obvious things like the plastic bag from the grocery store or plastic bottle that sits in the bathroom. It can be hidden in a whole bunch of stuff like tea bags, chewing gum, cigarette butts and our clothing as well. So it's good to kind of be aware of where plastic might be hiding. Is it in your toothpaste? And remember to check the recycling bin as well because that's something I've been trying to minimise. So for this month I've actually been trying to keep all of my plastic waste that has come into our home in this jar and to be honest the majority of it is kind of little bits of plastic that have come in from online orders and this month I actually had to do probably a few more online orders than I would normally. I had to order some like SD cards for the camera and a few other bits and bobs. Um, so I did get a little bit of extra plastic, so we've got some bubble wrap and just random bits in there. Um, and then also a few beer caps, so they have plastic on the inside even though they look like they're metal and I'm not quite sure what to do with them. I saw somebody make some really cool Christmas decorations from them last year in the window of a shop and I thought, ooh, that's an idea. So I'm kind of just collecting them in a cup under the sink at the moment, but I've put the ones that I've used for June in here just to give me an idea. Most of the time, I'd say most of the time, some of the time I get a refill when it's convenient and I'm lucky enough to have a few refill options near me, but they're still not convenient enough that I can just nip out and get one. I sort of have to work out, am I gonna be near that little beer refill shop? So occasionally I do buy an organic beer that comes with a metal lid, but yeah, it has a bit of plastic on the inside. What else? That's kind of it. Oh, and a hairband. I found one on the street, <laughs> washed it and then used it, but I think it might have weakened it slightly, so it snapped about a month later. So there's that, and I think that's pretty much it. Dropping things. And the occasional sort of sticky label that looked a bit plasticky. Actually, there's a lot less than I was expecting in there. I don't know why, you know when you sort of forget how much you actually produce <laughs> but that's not bad so that has been quite useful at giving me a little rough indication of what I'm still throwing out that's kind of non-recyclable single-use plastics that would otherwise just go straight to landfill and then I like to make a definite list of the sorts of swaps I'm going to make throughout Plastic Free July so in previous years for example I was still using a bottle of washing up liquid that wasn't a refill um, and I was really struggling to find a refill near me but I made it my mission throughout Plastic Free July that that was going to be one of the things that I was going to hunt down. I was going to find a refill. Sorry if you can hear that dog barking in the background. I'm in the countryside. He's got some tips as well. 
I did the same for uh, shampoo. So at the time I was still using an organic shampoo but it came in a plastic bottle. So I made it my mission throughout Plastic Free July to find a good shampoo bar or a shampoo refill option near me and I did. And I also swapped things like the microfiber cloths that I was using, even though they were reusable, they're made from a synthetic fabric that was likely shedding tiny microfiber plastic fibers out into the ocean. So I found some swaps for those, but it's good to sit down and think, hmm, what am I still using that contains plastic? And if you're kind of already on this plastic free, zero waste journey, don't think you can just go, hey, it's plastic free July. I can just chill in my hammock here. Oh no, my friends. Um, there's always a little bit of room for improvement and it's good to sort of just, yeah, see where you're at. So this year I won't be doing many online orders throughout July and I'll also be getting some beer refills when needed. Okay, so once I've made my list, I like to do a little bit of research and preparation. So this is all about sort of setting myself up for a win and making sure I know I've got places to go to where I can find a refill that's near me or researching some reusable alternatives for things that are currently disposable. And I've personally found, for me anyway, investing in some reusable items that I'm just excited to use means that I'm much more likely to use them. Things like for example, a little cloth bag. I was recently sent these ones by the organic company and they're just really lightweight. So even if I go shopping somewhere where they can't take the tear weight of the bag off at the cash desk, then I'm not really too fussed because they are so light. They're made from organic cotton and they come in green and white and in a whole bunch of different sizes. The white one's currently in the wash right now. So I found a little bit of research and preparation can go a long way in making Plastic Free July a success. So I like to kick off Plastic Free July once I've done all my sort of research and prep and list making by watching a few documentaries. I find it really inspires me and reminds me why I'm doing it. So I think last year I watched Tapped, which is a brilliant documentary about the bottled water industry. Bag It was another really good one. And also the one with Jeremy Irons in, but I can't remember the name of it right now. Yeah, so watching a documentary and doing some reading around plastic pollution and why it's so bad, I find that a really great way of just sort of kickstarting my Plastic Free July and yeah, reminding me why the heck I'm doing it. it. Gets me feeling all revved up. Leave perfection at the door. Plastic Free July is all about progress, not perfection. Basically, I look at it like I'm doing the best that I can. There will be circumstances that are out of my control where a little bit of plastic will creep its way in somehow. So I have to remember it's about focusing on the positive and not on the negative. Now my favourite tip is to go with the flow and bring your sense of humour to Plastic Free July. Yes, plastic pollution is a big issue and we need to take it really seriously, but it's okay to have fun doing it as well. Go with the flow, be adaptable and find the funny in the moment. My final tip for Plastic Free July is to reply or respond, whatever you want to call it. Basically, I found this really empowering whenever I've done Plastic Free July or just in general throughout a zero waste lifestyle. I found it really empowering to reply or write to companies where I have somehow received some packaging that I'm not pleased with. Start with a compliment, fill in with the frustration or disappointment and then end with a positive, so some suggestions that maybe they would like to look into. Customer feedback is really important and I found remembering that is a really great way of helping me get through Plastic Free July. There you go guys, those are just some of the ways that I like to approach Plastic Free July. If in doubt, just Google it. Or Ecosia it, I should say, because Ecosia is a search engine that plants trees whenever you search something. So I try and use that as well from time to time. Whatever your preferred search engine, the internet will likely have most of the answers. Whether you're looking for a reusable or a location to find refills, it's all out there. Oh, and also completely off topic, but I want to give it a little shout out. I've teamed up with Rapa Nui, which is an ethical, sustainable t-shirt company. And I've designed a few t-shirts. This is one of them, Zero Deche, which is French for zero waste. I like it because it's not too obvious, but it might 
start a conversation if someone's looking at my left boob. So all of the t-shirts and cloth bags are made from GOTS certified organic cotton and as a company they are closed loop so they take back any product that they've made and recycle it into other t-shirts or other products. They're based in the UK and everything is made to order so it'll only get printed if you order it essentially so there's no kind of surplus which is great. I have followed them for a little while and I really really love all that they do um, and I'm hoping to go and visit their actual factory on the Isle of Wight and sort of get a little behind the scene which I'll film for you guys but yeah I just wanted to let you know that I've got some t-shirts for sale um, but only get one if you do genuinely need a t-shirt please don't feel like you have to buy a t-shirt and I'm not encouraging you to just buy more things but if you're looking at t-shirts and thinking hey I like that design then uh, yeah check them out good luck if you're giving plastic free July ago remember be kind on yourself and try not to get too frustrated or rant at people thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye